The natural beauty of this area is still as spectacular as ever. Kelly Barnes Lake is no more. The dam that held back its waters was never repaired. But Tocoa Falls is still the way it was before the flood. And so, one year later, the people here have recovered with a few scars. The college is rebuilding, yet there are constant reminders everywhere of what happened here. One of those reminders, a permanent day of remembrance every year on November 6th. From the Toccoa Falls College, Dennis Kauf, Action News. About 20 miles up the road in Cedartown, water was ankle deep on most of the streets in town by noon today. The people here are just recovering from the bad flooding they had exactly one month ago, and frankly, the idea of more rain tonight has everyone in this town scared to death. About 20 miles up the road in Cedartown, flooding, whoops, one more time. About 20 miles up the road in Cedartown, water was about ankle deep on most streets in town by noon today. The people around here are just recovering from the bad flooding they had exactly one month ago, and frankly, the idea of getting more rain tonight has everyone in this town scared to death. Five, four, three, two. There was more flooding in northeast. Five, four, three, two. There was more flooding today in northwest Georgia, and folks up here are afraid it's going to get much worse tonight. I'm B.B. Emmerman, and I'll have a damage report. Now, you had to move out last time, just a month ago, and now you're moving out again today. How do you feel about that? I don't really know yet. I just hope it don't get any worse than what it is now. How'd you feel when you found out that you were going to have to move out again after you're just barely recovering from the last flood? I mean, it felt so good. <laughs> it, was, it was just a weird feeling. I mean, when you just have to get everything you got and go with right quick, you know. And it's bad to have to do it twice. It's a bad experience for anybody. I know that for a fact. How much did you lose in the last flood? Everything we had. So but now? Our, but our clothes, we saved a few of our clothes and some of our furniture. So you're just, you were just getting back on your feet and now this? Yeah, sure was. So that means that's probably going to be it for you? I hope not. Maybe we can make it some way. We, we'll get through it some way or another. So what we have here is a very tense waiting game among a lot of people who feel they've already been through enough already. 
A flash flood watch remains in effect for northwest Georgia, and the National Weather Service predicts at least two more inches of rain will fall tonight, and that's just enough for the whole nightmare to start all over again. In Cedartown, B.B. Emmerman, Action News. needs. Grant, Father, as we go forward in this life, that we may each live our lives in a fashion which would bring great praise to thy name. Help us, even as the Apostle Paul penned, in everything given here in our strength, but because you have strengthened us, we have lived. And for those of our dear friends who in this past year have sent on to glory portions or part or all of their families. May your sustaining grace continue to be their strength and power. And may each of us anew in that matchless name, the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. 
to have a, a low view of God. Because when you have a low view of God, your experience and God come together. And you are encapsulated in your experience. And you cannot go beyond your experience in life, in your mind. Then God is somewhere else as opposed to your experience. And that doesn't mean your experience isn't real. It doesn't mean it wasn't a valid experience in the pain that we suffered. But it meant that God was not controlled by the experience. God was somewhere else. And the experience was there. But God was even somewhere else and, and able to transcend, help us to transcend beyond our experience. This was the case, a high view of God. Tozer wrote that all the problems of heaven and earth, though they were to confront us together and at once, would be nothing compared to the overwhelming... God's eternal, unfailing faithfulness is the inheritance he has... O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the work of the good to those who love God, to those who are nor ours, nor mine, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, shall guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of our Lord, and the Holy Spirit. Rhonda Ginther, Nancy Ginther, 
Tracy Ginther, Robbie Harner, Christopher Kemp, Dirksen Metzger, Jeremiah Moore, Bonnie Lynn Pepsney, Paul Edward Pepsney, Joanna Sproul, Jocelyn Sproul, Melissa Sproul, Jamie Veer, Debbie Warner. We can thank God for the faith of little children. They possess the beautiful acceptance without doubt or reservations that their friends who love Jesus are now in heaven. Heaven is a real place for them, although they've never been there or seen it. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Perhaps this is why Jesus likened children to the kingdom of heaven. Such total confidence in the purpose of the Savior and His will is the beauty of our Christian life. It has been well put by an unknown writer. It is very easy to fall into the habit of doubting, fretting, and wondering if God has forsaken us and if, after all, our hopes are to end in failure. Let us refuse to be discouraged. Let us refuse to be unhappy. Let us count. The finish was a completion of the assignment that God had given. Mr. Metzger, it's, what kind of year has it been for you? Well, it's, it's been quite a year. We've been very busy. I'd say busy was probably would be the most adequate or accurate explanation. Uh, I've had just completely turn around in, in my whole lifestyle, and I've had to adjust to that. And we've had to deal with many problems, uh, especially with relatives and friends and uh, so it's been a year of adjustment and of course that, that causes you to be preoccupied sometimes and, and you don't get along uh, in your regular activity. The aspect of your life. Well, how would I characterize it? Just uh, the same as before in my attitudes. Uh, I came to Tacoa Falls to serve Jesus Christ and and that's what I'm still doing. I'm still serving Jesus Christ. And the incidentals are, are what I'm doing uh, while I'm uh, serving. You know, uh, you, you've remarried, and ha have, you, have you faced any special problems because of that? Either people saying that you shouldn't have done that, or how can you do that, or, you know, you see what I'm... Yes, that, that's happened only in one instance. Um, uh, and it was uh, quickly dealt with as soon as, uh, as soon as I found out about it. In other words, it was just a, an individual problem. But aside from that, I haven't really had any interpersonal problems at all uh, concerned with remarrying. Uh, we've had the usual uh, new marriage uh, problems, uh, things that need to get straightened out, the new lifestyles together. Uh, but nothing at all that was major, and I just praise the Lord for that because He's answered so many prayers concerning this, those things. A, a new study just came out that the federal government apparently went around and talked to a lot of you and, and found out that you have all recovered or at least adjusted to the, to the tragedy that you had to face a lot better than, than people who have been associated with other tragedies. How would you explain that? I would explain that because we, as a body here of Tacoa Falls, have hope. And we have hope uh, that someday that, that Jesus Christ is going to return. And that means that that no experience or no part of our uh, earthly life or temporal life ultimately affects uh, our eternal life. And and so 
we can uh, adjust to the situations that much quicker. And not only that, we have the Holy Spirit of God within us that, that lifts us up and empowers us to live our daily lives. One more question. A lot of people have been troubled with nightmares, recurring dreams, uh, uh, actually that night. Uh, and and it, a lot of times it causes me to look out the window to find out what was causing, what's causing the disturbance. Uh, no nightmares, and neither has Debbie. And uh, so, essentially, uh, the disturbances we feel are minor. Very good. I don't think any closer. We, we were really quite close before that, that it happened. And we share the common problem, uh, the common pain, but but we share even an amazing to me that brought me a new happiness, a deeper sense of joy that I could not have known had I not gone through the flood. So then while you still lost something, you, you gained something in the flood too? Oh yes, very much I gained. Um, it, was, it was an educational experience to say the very least. You know, I learned so much through it. What happened that day for you? That, that night? That night. Well, I was at work that night. I, I left at 11 o'clock for the hospital, which is where I work. And it was a slow enough night. It had rained all day, and everybody just felt kind of yuck because of the rain. And so um, we were working at a regular pace, kind of slow. We never really worked hard at, at night unless something, you know, a tragedy or a disaster happened. And at about quarter to two, I guess, um, someone came in. Onto, onto the hospital property with um, a fire truck. And so they sent me down to see what was going on. And so I saw um, D. Penny came in and I asked him, you know, what had happened. And when he told me, I just went, oh, you know, the dam broke above the falls. Well, hmm. I didn't know that there was a dam up there, so I didn't realize the intensity of the damage and what was going on. And, they, and um, I never really found out that they were really dead until um, I asked one of the guys to, to go and, and tell him to get a hold of me, and, and he wouldn't. And I, I asked him why he wouldn't go for me. He just said, because they're not around. And, and that's when I really knew, you know. And We just worked. It, that was the longest night. It seemed like it went on and on for days, and when really it did, but there seemed to be no break between night and morning. Now that it's, uh, that it's one year later, does this day have any special significance for you? It's such a beautiful day today. Yeah, the day itself, as far as the weather, you know, is really quite different than it was last year at this time. And I really feel like the Lord has given us these the past days. They've been so beautiful as kind of a covenant that that when we're down, when we're weakest, that's when we're strong in Him. You know, and that's kind of what it means to me. And being a year later, well, I'm looking forward to every year being a little easier and being able to handle the whole situation. Very good.